one, uh, power EV one and two LEDs, four LEDs total OFF. All four LEDs are off. Okay, EV1, EV2, you can demate the SCU from the DCM and install the DCM cover and then stow the SCUs in the pouch. Copy EV1. EV2, it's off. Still working on stowing it. Copy and work EV2. EV2 is off and stowed. Copy EV2. Confirm you're both ready to move on. They're stowed in the pouch. Okay, Roger. Check the depressed pump man ISO. And at 7:12 a.m. Central Time, 8:12 a.m. Eastern, the 247th spacewalk in support of station assembly and maintenance and upgrades has begun. Bear and Charlie now will work to open the thermal cover and make their way outside the space station hatch to begin their work for the day. The ground IV is NASA astronaut Victor Glover. You saw him on your screen previously. You're going to hear his voice as he speaks to the crew about the International Space Station. He'll be filtering information from the teams here in Mission Control up to the spacewalkers today. EV1 and EV2, max hot. Now you can switch water on. O N. EV1, EV2, you can switch water on, O-N. One, water is on, O-N. EV2, water is on. Check your DCM blank and bite light off. DCM blank, bite light off. Choose blank and bite light off. Copy, now you can set your TCV as desired. Let us know where, please. And copy EV one TCV to five. And EV2 is TCV5. EV2 is 5 also. Okay, please report suit pressure gauge to Houston. And EV1, EV2, report suit pressure gauge. EV1, four decimal two. Two, four point four. Copy four dot two, four dot four. Okay, set your visors as required. It is currently night. Uh, you're 10 minutes from sunrise and about to pass off the west coast of the United States. I do not, my visor's up for now. Roger's up, my lights are on. Also have my lights on. All 
All right, Kayla, you can open the hatch thermal cover. And I've got some detailed steps if you'd like those. Ready to open the thermal cover? Hey, Firm, you have a go to open the thermal cover, and I've got some detail steps if you need them. I got it, but um, Roger, could you either rotate onto your right side or your feet are kind of blocking my access? I need them. Show them if that's okay. There you go. I am releasing the thermal cover adjustable. Hold it first. Copy, and just a reminder, when you attach the hook to the stowage tether point, we'd like you to cinch that strap snug until you have six Sharpie lines visible on the tail. Okay. on the stowage point and cinching it now. Six lines. Six lines, thank you. Thermal cover is open. Looks great. When you're ready, you can egress the airlock. We recommend you position forward on the circular handrail. Okay, it works. And we now have confirmation that thermal cover is now open. Baron and Chari working to egress the space station. And you can now see on the top of your screen, Baron is now out of the space station. Baron is EV1. And I'm working on my anchor hook is attached to the board airlock, steering gate closed, cider lock, black on black. I have a good safety tether pass, and I'm going to work on Raja's anchor hook. Copy, and Raja's is going to the active. Just working on repositioning my FCU. I got snagged. I think I'm the way out. Make sure I can get to that later. So your anchor hook is attached to the airlock aft steering. Gate closed, slider locked, black on black. When ready, you have a go to release your waist tether. Copy. I've got a go to release my waist tether. Let me fix the FCU here first, and I'll work on that. Okay, copy that. And Kayla, please turn on your HECA. That's going to work. It's on green light. Copy. Thank you. And when you two are ready, Raja, I hear that you're uh, working with the SCU, and then you and Kayla can coordinate transferring out the strut bag. And I'm disconnecting my left waist tether from the airlock D-ring. And moving up to the strut bag. Okay, yes, and you're going to transfer the strut bag out to Kayla, and Kayla, when you receive the strut bag, you're going to stow it on your BRT with the tape side of the handrail toward your feet. Roger. And Roger, I got visibility under the airlock hatch, you're ready to help guide it through. Okay. Baron is EV1. Let's see if I can get the handrail toward you, and then I'll try to find it down there. It's caught up on the hatch somewhere. Okay. Do 
see the end coming down toward me? It looks like the... Right now you're caught a little bit on the knob of the uh, hatch lever. Yeah, I think the soft skip handle may have snagged over there. Okay. It feels like it's stuck. I can pull it more towards my end of the airlock and then lever it down. Yeah, you could try pointing uh, the, the outboard end of the bag towards the aft to kind of take advantage of that diagonal. Might help you get around the hatch knob. I could come back in a little bit if that would help, Raja. Uh, I'm trying to... I need to get the other end towards me up higher. It's stuck in okay. the hatch. Hatching mechanisms of the inboard hatch, maybe you said. I need to get that out. I'm going to try reaching my hand up to see if I can help you, Raja. Yeah, if you can push the whole thing up. The whole bag up? Baron and Chari are working together to get a strut bag so Chari can egress the hatch. Okay. And that'll give us more diagonal. There we go. Okay. I'll see if I can free it up. All right, there we go. Progress. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit out of the way here. And you okay. should. Be able to work that out here. Yep. All right, I don't think I have the handrail the right way, but I can hold it in position here to get you rotated. Okay. Um, let's come out a little bit more. Try to get a hand on it here. Okay, let's pause here. Okay. And I'd like to rotate it so I can see the handrail. Okay, I see the handrail. Now, Roger, I'm going to put my BRT red on it. Ready? I'm not going to try to catch the one that comes back because I don't have eyes on it, but once it comes back in, I'll try to get it on the uh, airlock D-Rank Center. Okay. And um, it rotated out of the way while I was grabbing my red, so... I can spin it either way. You don't have control of it up here. You just tell me which way to rotate it. Um, I can see the handrail, but I need you to push the bags, uh, oh, not further out. Sorry. Sorry. My end um, toward me, toward forward. Okay. Yep. And then we could. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I've got my BRT red on it. Um, two options, Roger. If you can reach the red, you can remove it now. Otherwise, let's bring it out another foot or so and I'll take it off. Uh I can't get you because it's on the other side okay. of the bag for me, so I can bring it out more. Let's bring it out more. All right, airlock threads removed and coming okay. back. All right, I saw it come back, good retraction. Okay, Roger, now I'm going to um, reposition myself a little bit, but I've got the bag in my hand. Take your time. And I'm going to work on getting it on my BRT here. Still sort of in the hatch. Okay, I've got it on my BRT, so I'm going to pull it the rest of the way out.
teamwork makes the dream work. Nice job working together, you two, to get EB3 out of the hatch there. And, uh, Roger, I heard you grab... Yeah. I heard that you grabbed your waist tether off that D-ring extender, so the next thing you're going to do is wait for Kayla to give you a go to egress and then retrieve crew lock bag one. Yep, and I've got crew lock bag one already on my BRT rat, and I'm working on stowing the uh, all end of the large swallow that was stowed onto the rear lock D-ring extender. And while you're still on set, here, I'll see if I can get the rat the strike bag right down to this. Yeah. I'm going to change the orientation on my BRT in the jaws just because doesn't quite want to stay where I want it. And work on getting it off to my side. Okay, if I come out partly with my legs, yep, you're, you're, you're going to come out, Roger. Big bag. Oh. Okay, and I have a small wet. <laughs> Uh, that one's holding the step bag that's also attached to the airlock view ring center for when you come back. Okay. And Roger, on your way out, mm -hmm. there's a D press, repress cue card that's kind of thrown behind the hatch. You have to turn around. I don't know if you're able to. Sorry, um, yaw around. You come out to your waist. I think I see it. Yeah, if you could see that back in, you probably shouldn't have even had it out. If not, we can get it at the end of the EVA, but probably be good to chuck it back in. And the sun's coming out, Roger, if you want to put your visor down. Okay, thanks. I'm going to increase my cooling a little bit. Okay, that repress card is back behind the hatch. Thank you, sir. Any EV1, EV2, or 15 seconds to a handover. Roger. And we're currently in a brief handover between satellites, which you're currently seeing in a National Space Station flight control room. Right here. I'll move away from you. That's a uh, crew cart, a deep breath cart floated out again, but we can. Okay. Should be untangled now to pop back up in there. And I'm trying to get my crew on where I want it. I'm a little bit too far out of it. I'm going to actually lock the exit up. Okay. Wait for the crew lock to come back. And Chari is now out of the hatch. Baron EV1 or extravehicular crew member one no is wearing the suit with the red stripes. Chari is EV2 and he's wearing the suit with no stripes. Another way to keep track of the crew members today will be by their helmet cams. Baron has helmet cam number 22 and Char Chari has helmet cam number 16. That's the crew lock bag. Let me know when you feel like you're ready for buddy checks, Raja. And Ike, let us know if you're back with us. 
Yep, I'm with you. And uh, once, Roger, when you're done with the bag and you have a free finger, you can turn on your HECA. Okay. Right, and so Kayla. Thermal cover is closed. Copy. Thermal cover closed. Thank you. And uh, let's see. Can you verify the stiffener D-ring strap is not over the magnet? It is not. Okay. And you've got that long wire tie there if you need to use that to free end of the hook around the soft goods handle. And uh, just let us know. And if you guys remember where you tucked that cue card, uh, we'll take that so we can remind you on the way back in to make sure it's still stowed. Um, it's just behind the thermal cover at the moment. It's tethered. It's just kind of yeah. in the way of the hatch actuating. Just need to tuck it in. Copy. Thank you for that. All right, ready for body checks if you are. All right, Roger. I see uh, green echo light. I don't see your WBS light, however. Okay. Um, so you, the white button on your EMU TV. So going out before. See, it's on now. Fun. Okay. Your helmet lights are on. We've got three tabs up, two main work workstation, one DRT. Both of your safer handles are down. And you've got the crew lock bag on your BRT. That looks really like a good position. And I think you got good eyes on your safety tether. Looks like you're in a good config there. Copy. And my baseline half check, half is dry. Copy. And for you, I see one, two TV lights on, HECA and TV. You're both your lights on. It's one of each if you want the slides for later. Uh, one, two, yaw, your body. That's good. Okay, three tabs up. And one. Safer handles down. Okay. And uh, the strut bag looks good. It's a little tilted towards your head, but I think that's fine. Um, and then wider at your feet, but uh, it okay. looks like a good stable position tucked in close behind your arm. Yeah, I see it in your reflection. I think I'm okay with how that is. Yeah, I think that's probably better. That's a little tighter in by your head, so it's not going think. Okay. And Roger, we'll, we'll take a buddy, uh, okay, sorry, a baseline half check from you. Dry. Yep, that is dry. And gloves look good. Okay, copy that. Uh, nice job, you two. And Kayla, that's a big bag with a long moment arm, so, uh, you know, it's only going to stay put uh, for so long, so don't fight too hard trying to keep that where it is. And if you two are ready to okay. translate, you, Kayla, are going to the S3, S4 interface inboard of the Sarge, and you will be leading. Roger, you will follow translating to the okay. starboard seat cart. Copy. Arming up the toolboxes. And Kayla, we'd like you to fair lead at the base of the seat spur. I copy that. Just going to take it nice and slow with this big bag. Yep. Yeah, that's right, Kayla. Slow and I'm steady wins the race. Perfect. And I've got a couple cautions I'll read to you all. Avoid contact with the radiators and flex hoses. Uh, it'll probably be obvious and self-correcting, but translate slowly, uh, especially with the strut bag on the BRT, and avoid inadvertent contact with the deployed test cables. Okay. I've got that fairly done, and I'm having not to put in my adjustable fairly. Copy, and that'll be at uh, S0 handrail 3410 for EV1. And EV2, you're going to do an adjustable at 3409. I see 3410. I'll stop here to get that um, adjustable down. I've got my adjustable fair lead on 3410. Roger, you have a go to start translating up, and I'll okay. kind of keep an eye on you. Come good. by the toolboxes, and then I'll continue. Okay, I'll come up the wagon wheel. I can see your tether.
Baron and Chari are currently translating to the Starboard Trust S4 worksite where they will install a solar array modifica modification kit. The starboard seat of heart, or correction port seat of heart, and rotate it underneath it. Nice job. You're looking good. That strut bag is flying formation with you. Thanks, Roger. And you're heading to the starboard seat of cart to stow the crew lock bag. And I'm starting under the MT. I got good visibility on the bag, and it's clear. We're currently seeing live views from helmet cam 16, which is EV2, Raja Chari's cam, as he translates to the S4 truss. I'm back on the cedar rail, past the starboard cedar cart. Approaching the spot where I'm going to head Nader for green hooks. Copy that. Yet yeah, just inboard of the Sarge, you're looking for uh, S3 handrail 3060, and yours will be the more Nader uh, of the uh, two vertical handrails there on the Nader side of the Sarge. All right, RC 3060. That is your green hook location. I think I'm caught up on something, so I'm just going to take a look at my cover. I got it clear. Yeah, I'm under the uh, cover up on the MT.
My green hook is on 3060. All right, nice job. And now you're going to translate to the 3 Alpha IEA non radiator side. So please check your gauntlets in place prior to crossing the Sarge. Gauntlets are in place. Sounds good. You're heading out to the IEA to stow that strut bag. Baron is trans. on the port, or sorry, the key cart. I'll get tethered here and get rid of the crew lock bag on top of this. Hey, firm, and just let us just let us know what square grid you dropped the uh, crew lock bag on. I made it to the IEA, and I'm heading further outboard. Hey, firm, station forward and outboard, and you're looking for handrails 2207 or 2206, and then we'll stow the strut bag. All right, I have a little sight. I like the uh, crew bags on grid C. Thanks, Roger. Grid Charlie. Now you can retrieve the WIFX and APFR with the ingress aid from WIF-1. Okay. And you're going to stow those on your BRT. And Kayla, it looks like you're close to uh, your position, so when you find those handrails, the way you want to orient the bag, the strut bag handrail goes toward the radiator, or if you can just see the way the lid opens, you want the lid to open toward the center of the IEA or toward the radiator. You just heard Baron confirm the strut bag being stowed at the IEA or the Integrated Electronics Assembly. Kayla, I believe also that means that the tape on the handrail will point toward the mass canister. Copy that. Working on the necessary rotation now. Got it in a good orientation, so we'll work on getting it cleared. Yeah, that looks good, and I think uh, 2207 and 2206 should be right in front of you. Another BRT went to the APFR, which is uh, blocked on the WIF X, and the WIF X is in by BRT with the gate closed. Okay, copy that, Roger, and now you're going to translate to the starboard Sarge, and you're going to also, uh, near Kayla's green hook, you're going to drop your green hook just seen at the hers on handrail 3061. Okay, 3061. And we currently see Raja. One of the corner adjustables down. I'll work on the other one. Copy adjustable on one corner.
We currently have views as Ranachari moves, translates back to the worksite after retrieving APFR or the articulating portable foot restraint. Now that the bag is and at least. Copy. Okay, well, I can see my tether on top of yours is planned, so that looks good so far out to the start, at least. Yeah. Roger, I see you're approaching the Sarge there, just uh, zenith of, zenith, uh, excuse me, of uh, Kalis and uh, Greenhook. You're looking for 3061, 3061. Tally, Tally 3061, that's my Greenhook here. down and what I'm going to do is open the lid and then probably tie back with one of the lid adjustables. Okay, copy. Nice work, Kayla. If you also could, uh, when you have a free hand, uh, turn, check your heck up one. Thank you for the heck of light. And uh, Roger, just confirm your gauntlets are in place after your green hook. You're going to translate to the three alpha IEA as well on the radiator side, station aft. Sorry, my gauntlets are down. I'm just getting ready to go across the search. Got a great camera view of both of you, and Raja, you're just going to head over uh, over the Nader, excuse me, Zena side of the IEA station aft. ready to uh, get to work, huh? Okay, nice job with the bag, and also I have a reminder here that you can turn on and stow the GoPro and just let us know where you place it. Uh, it's on, and I'm just going to leave it tethered to the bag. Copy. Thank you. And I think I'm going to take a second to put down my BRT, get a little more stability here. Get that mounting bracket back over here. Okay, and I've got my eyes on lift 26, which is my destination. 
A firm, yes. And when you get to width 26, you want to install the width X, and you will clock it to six. I'll remind you again when you get there and give you the rest of the settings when you're ready. All right, I've got the uh, mounting bracket, and I'm going to start going for the upper right strip. Okay, so before That's you start on two. that, uh, we would like a glove, half, and gauntlet check, and then we'll get into the upper triangle. Okay, that's going to work. I'll check my gloves now. If you're just joining us, we're bringing you live coverage today of the 247th Spacewalk in support of International Space Station Assembly, Maintenance and Upgrades. NASA astronauts Kayla Barron and Raja Chari have begun a spacewalk to assemble and install brackets and strut kits for an upcoming solar array upgrades. In place. All right, so yes, we are gonna start on the upper triangle build, and you said you have the mounting bracket, and uh, yep, it's gonna be the right upper strut from bag straps one and two. Those are in the upper left corner, uh, as you're seeing them. The duo exited the airlock this morning, starting the EVA at 7.12 a.m. Central Time, 8.12 a.m. Eastern Time, and now have translated to the Starboard Trust to the S-4 worksite. Mary and Tari are now taking struts and brackets out of their stowage space and will begin build the build out for the mount. The main focus will be on the installation of a 3A modification kit, but then they will then go to the six the S six truss to tie back multi layer insulation for spare bar battery charge discharge units. Pitch knob is popped out. There's work out five for the with X extension. Copy six call five. Those are your settings and thanks for the uh, full twist test. This is the fourth set of brackets, first one on the starboard side of the vehicle. A modification kit is the support structure needed for future IROSA or ISS rollout solar array upgrades. Right, right side, and that's the one to remember. You have that uh, strut tab that needs to go under the mounting bracket guide. The pieces should be flush together. You'll hear some acronyms today. You, I'm sure you've heard BRT. Before I do the Golf 5, uh, I can think of maybe I'll set up the APFR settings just so it's easier to, get, to reach it. Okay, copy that. Uh, settings 12, Tango Tango Fox 12. 12 is set. I got M13 and 14 hand started. Okay, copy, M13 and 14, four uh, we're looking for four turns, and I've got PGT settings, uh, actually, you've already hand started them, so next you're going to retrieve the left upper strut from the bag, and that's the uh, one on the right side, straps three and four. You'll hear acronyms today, just like spoken previously. Rajachari mentioned his APFR, or articulating portable foot restraint, that will help him during the assembly today. The crew is at the proper work site and are starting the 3A upper bracket build.
and uh, Roger and Kayla, I've got a, a warning for you here just about the uh, strut builds. The misaligned or fractured pit pin spring may present a sharp edge. Uh, inspect pit pins before actuating, please. I do. Copy. Okay, Kayla, and you're going to install the left upper strut L2 to the center pad L2. And then I've got PGT settings when you're ready. Drew, I'm going to try to hand start 17, M17. Okay, copy. Just let us know how many turns. The uh, APFR is 12. Tango Tango Fox 12. I have not done the WIPEX extension yet. I'm going to get my BRT right off there first. Untangle up with my safety tether, then I'll work on the WIPEX extension. Okay, copy that. And for the APFR, please verify that pitch knob has popped out. It did, pitch, it did pop out. Yep, good news. Good news. Took a little bit of course. Okay, right, copy. I'm hand started one turn on M17. Copy one turn oh, M17. PGT settings are Bravo 1, clockwise 2. You'll hear the duo today talk about their PGT or their pistol grip tool. They'll use that to bolt and unbolt things today. And Kayla, that's uh, Bravo 1 Uno. Bravo 1 clockwise 2. Much better. Bravo 1 clockwise 2. That is a good read back. You are going to drive M17 to torque for a total of 7 to 9 turns. So we're looking for 6 to 8 more turns. via Kayla's Baron's helmet cam. I have 10 additional turns, half line flash, green light, one one decimal nine for torque. Copy, 11 decimal nine on the torque. 10 additional for 11 total turns and the black line is flush. That is a good yeah. bolt to M17. Okay, now I know we just drove the bolt on the left upper strut but once your PGT is put away, you can release the ret from the right strut. The ret from the right strut. Understand. That's going to work. And Kayla, if you can see my safety tether, I think it just spun up above my helmet. I'm trying to come down a little bit and clear it while I was yeah, rotating right. around the wick back here. I see it. Um, it's kind of caught behind your L hip. Oh, there you go. That's clear. Just let it retract, it should tighten back up. And I got one eighty two removing the rep from the upper right strut. That is a good read back. And once that is off, you can install the center pad MLI and pit pin.
installed, working on MOI. Alright, with X and ABFR are installed to the five, and you know uh, you, where you're at, Taylor, in terms of coming over there to help you. Actually, uh, nice job on the APFR and WIFX. Roger, we need you to pause. Just uh, give your medics a second, so just okay. stand by and pause EV2. And EV1, will you repeat your last call, please? Um, pins in place, MLI's in place, and I will move on to M1516. Okay, now we're going to assemble the left upper strut to the mounting bracket. And so... We want to install the left upper strut L8 to the mounting bracket left side. And again, make sure that uh, same slide tab is under the mounting bracket guide. We are currently in between satellites, but we should have signal back to the EVA shortly. And Kayla, I have PGT settings for you when you're ready. I've got four turns by hand on M15, and I'm going to see if I can get M16 and engage one turn, and then I'll go from a PGT. Copy, four turns by hand on M15 in working M16 now. Okay, I've got one turn by hand on M16. And I'm just going to reposition the triangle a little bit and then I'll grab my PGT. Copy, one turn by hand on M16. Standing by with PGT settings. Hey, your PGT settings are Bravo 3, clock 2. And we're going to drive M16 first. Right, Bravo 3, clockwise 2, set. And starting with M16, you're going to drive 16 and 15 to torque. You have a go. And M16 should be about 25 total turns, so 24-ish more. And Raja, how's your HAP doing? Dry. Copy dry hat, thank you. All right, I I got a red light low torque, uh twenty one decimal two four turn. Um and that matched my count of twenty two turns. Thinking I should try it again. Okay, stand by. Copy uh, red light low torque. And yes, with Bravo 3, clock 2, you have a go to hit it again. And copy 22 more turns for a total of 23. All right, I hit it again. Green light, one eight decimal 2 for torque. And I got maybe an eighth of a turn out of that additional hit. Copy green light, uh, 18 decimal 2 on the torque, and an eighth of a turn for 23 and an eighth. And how's the black line doing? Black line is flush. Copy, black line is flush. 
You can move on to M15, looking for about 21 more turns, drive that one to torque. Currently seeing views of Kayla Baring using that pistol grip tool. They'll be using it throughout today's spacewalk. And that is essentially a space drill that is used to help secure and release bolts during the spacewalk. And then we can move over to help Kayla out building the triangle. Well, look good. And call the two down. Copy all start heading Kayla's way. And, um, yeah, I guess we still have two bolts to drive. And Roger. pretty close, though. Actually, yeah, um, you can stand. And I got another low. I'll stay here. I can start getting the APFR if you want. Yeah, you can stay there and start working on ingress in the APFR. And Kayla, you stand by. You, got to... you can go ahead and hit it again. Red light, low torque, and that was. Okay. Okay, now I got a green light, 18.3 on the torque, and that was zero additional turns. And can we get the initial uh, turn count and the black line? Black line flush. Yeah, I hand started at four turns, and then we got two zero additional turns for a total of 24. Copy, 20 additional for a total of 24. Green light, black line, flush on M15. Okay, Kayla, you can release your RET from the left strut. You can release the RET from the left strut. All right, you can install the mounting bracket. Get back to M13, 14. Uh, that you you can install the mounting bracket MLI. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Mounting bracket MLI. Okay, Roger that. Now one hour into today's spacewalk, recapping some of the milestones. The spacewalk began at 7.12 a.m. Central Time, 8.12 Eastern, when suits were switched on to internal power. Baron and Chari have now arrived at their workstation and have begun the upper 3A bracket build-out. Your safety cover is between your legs. Ah, uh, that's what it is. Okay. It'll be a factor for up here when I come back so I can fix it. I agree. All right, about the MLI on the left side. Mounting All right. bracket. Copy that. Now we're going to go and torque the right upper strut to the mounting bracket. And I've got some PGT settings for M14 and 13 when you're ready. Bravo 3, clock 2, and you're going to drive M13, 
13 and 14 to torque in any order. Green light, one eight decimal four, black line is flush, and that was two one turn additional. All right, on uh, which bolt? Thirteen. M thirteen, eighteen point four, twenty one additional for twenty five turns. Green light, black line flush. You have a go for fourteen. And Raja, while you're up there. No sudden moves on the mass canister or the mod kit. Uh, move slowly on the BGA. And maximum lateral loads are uh, not a whole lot, so be gentle up there. Avoid cyclic loading and do not impart forces into the mod kit struts when not fully installed. I'll give you guys a call when it's fully installed. And battery and adapter plate cables on the IEA are potential snag hazards. Green line, right, black line flush, one eight decimal four, zero turns additional. And I believe I copied two zero additional turns for 24 total green light and a black line that's flush. Hey, that's a good M13 and 14. Uh, please verify after you put your PGT away, verify the center pad MLI and pit pin. Interpad MOI and pit pin look good, and the MOI on the mounting bracket side is in work. Uh, stand by on the on the other MOI. Okay, stand by. Yeah, just the center pad MOI and pit pin, and then uh, you're going to move the long PGT. So once you've uh, verified those. Center pad MLI and pit pin look good and understand need to grab the long PGT. Okay, Kayla, actually you, you have, have a go. Kind of on edge making that call whether come over. That's the best start. There you go, ahead, Ike. Uh, I was going to say you you can do that MLI now if you want to, or you can just leave it to to, to for Roger to do. Um, so your choice, and then we're going to move the long PGT, the one with the 716, 6-inch wobble. Yeah, concur. I do that. I'll leave it for Raja because it should be a little bit easier for him. And I'm working on the PGT now. Okay, yep. You're going to move the long PGT from the strut bag to the right upper strut handrail stanchion nearest the center pad. And there is a ret and adjustable in the bag that you can use. All right, Roger, don't worry. We're getting to you soon. No worries. One thing I did notice, like, is, uh, I've got the ingress aid pulled back, but I can't actually push it down as I can't reach the knob to unlock it to get it to go down. Okay, copy that. Uh, if you do want to compress it even just a couple inches, sometimes you can, as you I can twist. Pull it back, though. Copy, pull back. Try twisting the handle a little bit, kind of yaw it as you push down. That might collapse it an inch or two. I, uh, I don't I'm keep trying that, but I'm 
much motion out of it. Okay, if I did not caster, I could bend over and do it, but it's, I can't bend over without my, my helmet hitting the, the mass caster. Okay, right, roger so that. Is in place. Okay, copy that, Kayla. And Roger, it's just a reminder that uh, ingress aid, we're tucking it because we've seen it uh, knock that uh, BRT tab loose and, and uh, yeah, dislodge BRT. BRT. So just be aware of that. All right, so we're going to set up to hand off the upper triangle uh, so that we can install to the mass canister. Uh, let's see. So now, Kayla, we're going to transfer the upper triangle with the PGT to EV2, and you can leave them on the bag. It's a RET RET in series. Yeah. Roger, let me know when you got visibility on the triangle. I can triangle. see part of it, but not quite reach it yet. I'm going to work on rotating it around a bit. i to give you the right side first. Just over one hour and seven minutes into today, today's spacewalk, Baron and Chari are currently focusing on the build out of the 3A bracket for the solar ray modification kit. The new solar rays, which are set to be delivered to the space station on upcoming commercial resupply service missions, are a larger version of the rollout solar arrays or ROSA technology and will ultimately increase the station's total available power from 160 kilowatts up to 215 kilowatts. We do have a special guest with us today on the line. Jeremiah McNett is a photovoltaic technology lead. Hi, Jeremiah. Hi, Sneakwa. Pointing up. And so remember how this uh, mechanism works. You're going to engage the left side first. Thank you and for having me on today. it's up and down to engage it. If it doesn't slide all the way in, it's up and down a little bit till they engage, and then you're going to pivot it uh, to the right to engage the soft dock. Jeremiah, can you please explain to us what a photovoltaic technology lead is? Certainly. I, I'm the photovoltaic technology lead at NASA Glenn Research Center, where we do a lot of uh, research and development efforts for new photovoltaic devices uh, through arrays. Actually, and yeah, Kayla, my before, role as the tech the lead PGT, is to oversee the cycle, all the projects that we have uh, that we're working on, uh, look for new ideas and new concepts uh, to start to pursue in the future, and then uh, support flight missions, such as um, what's happening with the IROSA arrays and with Gateway and Artemis to uh, photovoltaic systems on the lunar surface. That is amazing. And you did miss, mention just now the IROSA solar arrays. Um, why are they important technology for us right now? ROSA and the IROSA arrays are super important. As you said at the beginning, they're going to add more power to the space station. The ROSA arrays were uh, developed over the past 10 years or so, and we've seen in the past couple of years a uh, demonstration on space station, and they were just used on the DART mission. And the benefits of ROSA is that you can store a lot more solar array in a much smaller package. So the arrays that are being deployed for the IROSA are about 20 kilowatts each, and they're stowed in one very small, um, compact rolled tube that can then be put into uh, different commercial resupply vehicles. So a much easier way to get a lot of power up into space. Um, we're going to continue that when we use them on Gateway on the power and propulsion element, and um, and also maybe on the lunar surface. Okay, copy, Roger. Good job on uh, getting that soft dock. I've got some PGT settings for you when you're ready. That's awesome, Jeremiah. And I know you mentioned the gateway. Can you explain a little bit about gateway and how the technology that you guys are looking at now will help for future exploration in deep space? Certainly. Um, so I'll first uh, talk a little bit about Rosa, IROSA to gateway. Okay, and then it's going to be the IROSA arrays are around uh, 20 kilowatt um, each. The, the arrays that are going to be on Gateway on the power and propulsion element are 30 kilowatts each. So a little bit larger, about 50% um, larger in size. 
And what's really unique and what's different between what's happening on Space Station and what's going to happen on Gateway is that when the power and propulsion element of Gateway is launched, those uh, arrays will open autonomously. They'll open on their own. Um, currently, what uh, people are seeing right now on Space Station is an adapter bracket is being installed, an installation bracket. And then later on, when those uh, IROSA arrays make it up to Space Station, uh, they will be deployed with support of uh, the astronauts. For Gateway, they'll be deployed on their own and will provide power for off that mission. The power and propulsion element is just one of the different components of Gateway. There's also going to be um, other modules that will attach to it. And while that's orbiting uh, the moon, it's going to be a great stopping point and a stepping off point for astronauts to go to the lunar surface to continue to do research on the moon and then also eventually be able to be used to uh, let us go further out to go to Mars and to continue to explore the, the solar system. And that is amazing. Thank you, Jeremiah, for your time this morning. That's Jeremiah McNett, the photovoltaic technology lead, going over some of the great work that these modification and IROSA array, solar array rays will help do on the International Space Station and our future with the Gateway. Thank you, Jeremiah. Thank you. Two turns each Thank you. Five through eight. And with the same PGT settings and two turns on all four bolts, now we can drive M5 through 8 to torque a minimum of three additional turns. Sorry, driving all three of torque, it's three additional turns. Start with M5. And an update, the crew is complete with the 3A upper bracket build task and are beginning the installation of the center pad to the mass canister. But you guys are already getting some interesting lighting conditions up there. Just do what you got to do. M5, 4.7 additional turns, good green lights, and 3.1. Copy, was at 4.7 additional turns, green light on M5. Three turns on M8, future in light, 3.6. Copy, 5.3 additional turns for 7.3 total green light on M8. M6, 5.3, green light. And M7, 5.1 turns, green light, 3.7. Copy, 5.1 additional for 7.1 total on M7 with a green light. That's a good M5 through 8. Okay, Roger, now you're going to transfer the long PGT with the RET and adjustable combo from the upper triangle to Kayla. We're trying to get in position for that, Roger. And Kayla, you're going to stow that on your swing arm. 
Okay. Once you get control of it, I'll take the other side of the right off. It's above your head. Trying to put the socket down in front of you. I got it. All right. Once you have a red eye, let me know and I'll let go of this one. I'm back. and we're a minute 45 seconds to a handover. If you can verify the grounding pit pins, there should be two are installed into the grounding block and the MLI for the left and right upper strut is closed. And I believe we left that left upper strut MLI for you to do. I'm working on that right now. Both grounding pit pins are installed and then uh, just tighten the MLI now. I think I'm good to get out of the APFR, is that correct? Uh, in just a second, yes. Uh, verify the upper triangle is not rotated up. It's not, it is down towards my waist. Copy. And then uh, once you're both able, we'll take glove, hap, and gauntlet checks from you, and then you can egress the APFR and adjust 25 seconds to a handover, and I'll catch you on the other side. Do this APFR egress tail. I may need your. EV1, EV2, Houston's back with you. I got gloves. Same as baseline with the exception of there's some new smudging. It looks like um, maybe some of the labels on the struts are kind of rubbing off onto my gloves. I can see some ear image letters on my fingers, um, but everything else looks good. My hat is dry. And the gauntlets are down. Copy, dry hap, good, good gauntlets. Mm -hmm. And for EV1's gloves, you've got some smudging. You believe it's ink from the strut labels. Good copy. And for EVC, you've got a dry hap, gauntlets are down, and some uh, smudges on my right pinky, ring finger, and index finger, and left ring finger, just some uh, like smudge marks. 
copy. Dry hap, good gauntlets, and smudges on the right pinky index and ring finger and left ring finger. And with that, I'm going to egress the APFR, zero yikes. You have a go to egress. And I've got... Uh, I got eyes on your grinder. And be mindful of your safety feathers between your legs, so you may want to... That's why I'm... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we can see it in the camera view, too. And so you may want to point your feet back toward your fair lead on the corner of the IEA and uh, try to work it back between your legs into the front. Now, one hour and 22 minutes into today's spacewalk, recapping some of the milestones today. Uh, I didn't know if you, I think anomaly, you would have wanted the tether off your right side. Yep. Let's go and off my left. So far today, the crew has gotten to their work site, completed a 3A upper bracket build out, and now has begun the installation of the center pad to the mass canister. They're currently doing a hap and glove check. Roger, you said uh, adjusting the WIFX extension to one. Correct. Happy. And then, hey, before you get back in the APFR, if you want to run a fair lead down to that uh, outboard aft corner of the IEA, that's off to your right. That may also help keep your tether on. Yeah, let me do that while I'm down there doing the APFR or the uh, WIFX. Perfect. Good idea. And then last one, and I'll remind you before you get back in, if you want to loosen the friction on the ingress aid a little bit, that might help you tuck it away. And copy, Kayla, I heard you say you're grabbing that left mid strut, straps 12 and 13, bottom right side of the bag. Got it ready to go. Copy. And so just something for you guys to think over. He can ingress, and then you can pass it, or you can pass it to him, and then he ingress the APFR. Over to you guys. You are going to do a ret swap on that one to uh, Raj's uh, BRT. We plan on the ingress of Copy. You said ingress before the handoff? Yeah.
Currently in an orbital nighttime, we see Chari and Baron using their helmet lights to fully install brackets. Excuse me, we see Baron and Chari as they install the 3A center pad to the mass canister. crew has completed the center pad install and they are now moving on to the installation of the left struts. Hey, we copy. Yeah, I see you loosening the friction on the ingress aid. Yeah, just enough so that you can push it down and it'll stay where you leave it. All right, we got uh, 12, Papa Papa, so 12, 12. The lift axis back down to one. Copy, those are good settings and confirm the pitch knobs popped up. Good pop out, yep. I'm going to go work on trying to put this tether somewhere so it keep snagging on me. Roger, you may want to give your waist tether a tug just to get it a little higher. You real? There you go. I wanted to get hot behind you again. Thanks. I popped off this handrail so it's behind my legs, though. It's crossing your body at, over your left knee right now. There you go. You should see it now coming around. Uh, Italian, thanks. Uh, time to pause here. Uh, I can go ahead and put an adjustable down with this fairly. If Let's you like it, I love it. Place. Yeah, sounds good. Yep, take your time, Roger, and then uh, if you could let us know the handrail that you uh, put the adjustable on, or where you put it. That's uh, inboard recessed one. Uh, the one just 42. Say again, Roger. 242. Is that 2242? Yep, yeah, it was the original one we were going to set. It's just I put an adjustable there instead of dropping it around. Copy, yep, an adjustable on 2242. What are you doing for the same grass grinder?
reels. Yeah, there you go. Well, there. Well, thanks the roll changed on me, did it? Cool. Might be pushing the yaw pedal right now. There, it looks square yeah, again. Yeah, it's Okay, yep. I'll make sure. Watch that yaw pedal. That's more jam bait than uh, ingress aid too loose now. <laughs> Yeah, Roger, and if you got to leave it uh, rigid, uh, that's fine. We'll just keep an eye on that BRT. Well, I'll definitely give you a hard time bending over before, so I want to damp that since I don't have to bend over for those bolts and MLI. Yep. And then just a reminder, Raja, not to use the mod kit for the APFR ingress or egress. Got to say it. No, understood. That's why it's taking me. <laughs> Time to avoid touching that triangle. Let me tighten it a little bit more here. Wait up, I can still move it. I think I'm in on the right. Uh, oh. Right heel doesn't look locked into me. Might be in too deep. Maybe if it feels good, I'm kind of a weird angle. The left is in. You're right, the right spot, Clyden. Um, I don't think your left is in either. I think you have your, your toes in too deep. Okay. So you need to back the one you're going to actuate out before you rotate inboard. in one toe and then work in the other heel and then circle back for the first one. Okay. In a little, if you're working your left, you might be in a little too deep, so back your toe out a little bit. Working your left foot right now? Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, you're in too deep, so I would start again with your heel out and up. Okay, now there you go. Now rotate inboard. Other, tilt drop soon. Now 
sir. This is further inboard. And you might need to back your toe out. Now rotate in. That's play. I almost like my toe got wedged in there. One other thing that helps to keep your feet flat to the boot plate, it's tempting to lean forward and look at your toes, but actually squat down a little bit, put some bend in your knees, and even slightly lean back, just a tad. On my right side. Okay. I don't have great visibility on it because of where your safety tether reel is, but I might be able to check once you think you're in. I'm right, I think I'm in too deep. I agree. I'm caught on my reel or something. If you're just joining us, welcome to Mission Control Houston. We're bringing you live coverage today of the 247th Spacewalk in support of the International Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades. NASA astronauts Kayla Barron and Raja Chari have ventured outside the space station to assemble and install brackets and strut kits for upcoming solar array upgrades. I've got pressure on the top of my feet, but I think I'm mistaken for the top of the suit. I think it's actually the BSI, but anyways. Go off in now, though. Sure. And I'm Nice work, Raja. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Way to stick with it. Go a little higher. Right, this is going to the get my BRT red on it. Hey, firm, you're going to red swap and then stow that one on your BRT. To recap some of the milestones, at 7.12 a.m. Central Time, 8.12 a.m. Eastern Time, NASA astronaut Kayla Barron and Raja Chari turned their suits onto battery power, marking the official start of today's spacewalk. They are currently working on the starboard four truss at the 3A power channel. So far, they have successfully installed the upper brackets and center pad to the mass canister. They are currently working on the left struts. All right, Kayla, looks like you're back to the bag, grabbing the left lower strut, straps five and six. And work. Ready for the lower? 
And Raja, once you've got that uh, mid strut on your BRT and out of the way, uh, tuck and if you can, collapse that ingress aid. Already done. Copy. And now you're going to retrieve the left lower strut uh, and pass that to Roger. And Roger, you hands. want. I've got my hands on the left lower. And you're going to rent to the handrail the, uh, nearest the clevis end of the left lower strut. Yep, I've got that. It's the same stanchion that has the wire tie on it. And I've got control of it, and I've got my okay. right on it. I'm going to release the bag rep. It's released. Okay. You have the strut? I have the strut. Okay, Kayla, you can translate to the Saab launch bracket at the base of the mass canister left side. Hey, we're five minutes to sunrise. And then, Roger, if you can verify the grounding pit pin is removed from the strut stow location. Pin is actually in, if you can see my camera, so that, you want that out, correct? So I need to put that into the mounting bracket. Hey, Firm, we like it removed. It's removed now. Happy. Okay, Kayla, once you get uh, to that Saab launch bracket, you're going to uh, report the spherical bearing alignment, and remember that's a pitch point. Keep your fingers clear of the lower strut pad and BGA interface uh, when you guys go to install this bolt. It looks pretty straight to me. Okay, we copy. That's good news. So now we're going to work together to install the left lower strut M21 to the Saab launch bracket. Roger, if you want to start working yeah. the... Coming towards you. Okay. All right. All right, we need to go Zenith. And if you could push your end a tiny bit toward the mass canister. That's good right there. Okay. Uh, a little more Zenith. Uh, okay. Maybe, um, yeah, that's good for now. Okay, Kayla, and you're going to hand start M21 four turns. Uh, and I've got PGT settings if you're ready. Hand started four turns. Copy, hand starting four turns on M21, and I've got PGT settings if you're ready. Uh, it's already done four turns. And. Copy. Do I start driving now, or does Roger do his end first? Uh, yep, uh, copy four on M21, and so we're going up to Roger. Okay, we're going to... Okay, we're going to... I'm doing Bravo 1, clockwise 2. A firm, Bravo 1, clockwise 2, and two turns on M22. Copy. I'll use the CGT for the tablet. And Kayla, you're going to PGT Bravo 7, clockwise 2, next. Bravo 7, clockwise 2, set. Okay, good count, 41.1 volts. Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Hey, firm, Bravo 1, Thanks. clockwise 2 for Roger. And this is that bolt that has the multiple diameters, and so you've got to get the thinner part that threads through, and then the larger part has to come through. So there's going to you can kind of wiggle to get the get that bolt all the way through the different uh, brackets there. And then you want to put two turns on M22, Bravo One, Clock Two. Okay, the thin black line is flush. It comes two turns. Two turns. Copy. Two turns on M22. And Kayla, we're going over to you now. Uh, 
we're going to drive M21 to Torque. And uh, again, it was Bravo 7, Clock 2, so get in a good position. Bravo 7, clockwise 2, set, and I'm going to start train. And we got a low torque, but I wasn't in a great body position um, at the end there, so I'd like to give it another go, if you agree. Counted nine turns. Okay, I think I heard nine turns with a low torque, and you have a go to hit it again. And I got a green light, 25 decimal four. Um, and that was maybe half to one additional turn. And I'm going to get in a better position to tell you black line. Copy, half to one additional turn. So I'm showing uh, 13 and a half, sorry, uh, 13 and a half to 14 turns with a green light, and you're checking the black line now. Actually, we aren't in final torque yet, so the next thing you're going to do is socket swap the two inch socket off of your PGT to the torque wrench and we'll final torque with the wrench. Socket swap, good pull test. Thanks for the pull test. Uh, good socket swap, and now you're going to final torque with the torque wrench, and it should be set to clockwise and 60 foot pounds. This is the untaped torque wrench. And we're looking for about one turn, and we want the torque wrench to break over twice. Black line looks parallel and flush. Um, there's maybe a tiny bit of um, metal still showing, so maybe not, like I would say maybe a millimeter. Okay, the black line and is a I would millimeter. Say about a little over one additional turn. A little over one additional turn, and about a millimeter uh, between the black line. Uh, and the bolt cam. Um, hey, stand by, we're checking.
Okay, Kayla, and if you could uh, check the gap between the strut boss and the bearing surface and also give it a wiggle test. Looks uh, parallel with no gap and good wiggle test, so secure to me. Okay, we call that a good M21. And uh, you can socket swap the two inch from the torque wrench back to your short PGT. And Roger, I've got PGT settings for you when you're ready. Yeah, I've got throttle one clockwise two and ready for uh, number turns and drive. All right, you can drive M22 to torque. Be the torque. M22, I had uh, 6.9 turns, good green light, 12.0, and black line, uh, flush, but from the parallax here, with the mirror, it's flush, maybe a half millimeter. I can try hitting it again. Okay, 6.9 for a total of 8.9 turns, green, green light, and you're saying a half a millimeter between the black line? Yeah, that's, um, it looks like more from my angle, but when I put the mirror up to it, I'd say half millimeter at max. Relax on it. I'm trying to get a straight uh, on look at it. That's a good M22, Roger. Socket swap complete. I did full test. Copy. Thank you for that. Uh, Roger, you can show your PGT, and Kayla, please verify the lower strut MLI covering the lower strut pad. Lower strut MLI is covering the pad. I'm working the pit pin on this side. All right, thank you. And uh, you can install the grounding pit pin to the grounding block and then install the MLI. And Kayla, uh, check your left and right safer handles down and then you can translate to the mass canister left pad install location. Okay, grounding pit pin is into the mounting brackets. And MLI is around the M22 pulse. Okay, sounds good, and you can release the ret. That's to the low, left lower strut. That's coming off the left lower strut. I'll check my safer handles when I get up to the uh, side pad. I can see your right side is down. You're good on that side. Thanks, Roger. Copy, Kayla. Safer uh, handle is down. Thanks, Kayla. Left and right safer handles down. And Roger, when you have a free hand, you can grab that left mid strut from your BRT. And confirm I can take the locking pin out of it and start extending it. Okay, yeah, you can release the middle grounding pit pin from the lock position. It's opposite the handrail. And then you can extend the mid strut with the side pad towards Kayla. I'm ready, grinder. I got my BRT down.
All right, Kayla, and once you have that side pad, you're going to engage the right side first. Remember, it's a little up and down to engage that uh, clevis, and then you're going to pivot it outboard to the left to engage the soft dock. And again, friendly neighborhood Fairchild fasteners here, so use caution, and you can hand start bolts M1 through M4 two turns. I'm going to plan to use my PGT for these ones. Copy that. PGT, it's the uh, long PGT for M1 through M4. And then, Raja, over to you two okay. on the sequence. But, uh, can I get settings for that, Ike? A-firm, alpha 2, clock 2, and I we just go with the side pad first, and then we'll come back to Raja. So alpha 2, clock 2 for M1 through M4, two turns each. Holding this for me because I won't be able to reach it after you Yeah, I will be able to get to it. <laughs> I'm just biased a little left for the bolts here, but I can move over there. Turns on M1. Two on one. Two. two on two. Turns on M3. Two on M3. Turns on M4. Copy two on all M1 through M4. And Raja, if you can install the left mid strut L8 to the upper strut L8. If you need to pop a foot out, uh, you can do so from the APFR. And then I've got PGT settings for you when you're ready. Okay. Uh, I think I've got it hand started, actually. Got one turn by hand. Copy one turn by hand. Now two hours into today's spacewalk, recapping some of the milestones of today. Okay, I got two turns by hand. If that works, otherwise I can deal with the PGT. Okay, Bravo, one clock. At 7.12 a.m. Central Time, 8.12 a.m. Eastern Time, Baron and Chari turn their suits on battery power, marking the official start of today's spacewalk. And this is on M28. Uh, you say you got two turns. You're going to drive M28 to torque. M28 to torque. Sorry, I got ahead of you there, I, but I, I was able to pop it through with my fingers and see the fastener come out the other side, so I didn't want to go with my grip. I hear you. Get it while you can. Yep. All right. The crew then translated over to the 3A work site on the S4 truss, where they have now completed the 3A upper bracket build, 3A center pad to mass canister, and they have just completed the left lower strut install. The Iorosa mod kit is in a good minimum configuration, and the crew is continuing to be on time on the cur current time table. Copy. Thank you. Hey, I'm M28. I had uh, 6.7 turns on the PGT. Uh, good green light, 11.8. 6.7, copy black line flush, 6.7 after your two hand start for 8.7 total turns, black line flush on M28. Roger, you can stow your PGT and Kayla, those same PGT settings will use to torque M1 through M4. Alpha 2, clock 2. She's doing that, uh, I'm going to put the pit pin in up here. Alpha 2, clock 2, set. Copy, and you have a go to drive. Copy, M1 through 4 to torque. And, Roger, you can install that grounding pit pin to the grounding block. One minute to hand over. Roger, you can get a nice, long glove check. We'll take a half and gauntlet check on the other side. And, Kayla, you can drive M1 through M4 to torque at Alpha 2, Clock 2. M1, green light, 3.7, four turns. Four turns, green light, M1.
30 seconds to hand over. Green light, door turn, uh, three decimal seven on the torque, M2. M2, four turns, green light. piece of metal sod right there. Okay, yeah. we're back with you, Kayla, and can you repeat and that call? Yeah, so M3 and M4 are both driven to torque with a green light. Uh, four, five turns on M3, four on M4, and there's a small piece of metal sod. Um, it's like a, look, kind of looks like a curved wire. Um, like a, not quite a half circle. Um, like maybe it's a piece of a spring or a washer. And I first saw it near the side pad M3. But I didn't Copy. see it separate. I, I didn't think it, yeah, it would look more like uh, the same size spring. I don't see, I can see the wire it looks like that kind of thing. So I don't think it was, just, I don't think it was the back of the fair child faster. Yeah. All right. I didn't, I had, Checks on that bolt. Okay. Can you guys verify that the pit pins are all still installed? Uh, the side pad pit pin is installed. Yep, and the two, uh, both the lower strut and the mid strut are installed. And I can okay. see the upper strut to the center pad are installed as well. Copy. And Kayla, uh, being careful of any sharp edges there, if you could give a wiggle test on each of the bolts in one through four. They're recessed, so it's a little bit hard to get my fingers in there, but they do look flush. Um, I didn't encounter any resistance while the bolt was turning, and I watched it engage, um, and I got good uh, torque in light. And I don't think they're wiggling. They all look good to me. Okay, copy. Thank you for that report. And I copied your M3 and 4 reports. Five turns on three, four on four with green lights on both. Uh, and you said a small uh, half circle-ish piece of FOD looks like a curved wire or maybe a part of a spring. And you saw it initially near M3. And Kayla, do you see where that piece of thought is now? It floated toward Raja and then away. I tried, yeah, I tried to stop it with my glove and then it bounced uh, station forward. Copy. Thank you. All right, that's a good M3 and M4. Good side pad install. Kayla, you can stow your PGT. And if you can reach it, you can release CV2's ret from the left mid strut. Yep. That's released. My PG is stowed. Okay, copy in. Uh, mid strap hip pins installed. Thanks for that, Roger. And we'll take that glove hap and gauntlet check from you. And Kayla, you can verify the pit pin and the MLI are installed over the side pad. Verified, installed. My gauntlets are down. I uh, still have a dry hat, and the only other new smudge is on my left thumb, a small little smudge. Um, may have been maybe but no, but no other new. Copy left thumb smudge for EV2. I think okay. I'm egressing the FGFR and reconfiguring it. Is that true? Uh, 
that is true. And Kayla? I think I'm headed to get the torque wrench and PGT. A firm, the short PGT and the torque wrench uh, from S4 handrail 2240 and the torque wrench from the left lower strut. And you're going to bundle them together and take them to the strut bag. And Raja, one other thing, uh, if you could uh, power on your WVS, I think we saw it power off. I push the button, it looks like the light's still off. I'll push it again. I uh, still don't see a green light. Try it one more time. Okay, I see a green WBS light. Happy, good config, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Kayla, so yeah, you're grabbing that short PGT and that uh, torque wrench from the left lower strut. You're going to bundle them and then uh, attach them to the right lower strut, which is in the strut bag. Okay, okay Roger, and I've got uh, APFR settings for you if you need them. So I'll have a pop of Charlie 12, so that I can just change the uh, roll. Good copy. The crew is now complete with the left struts and are moving on to the right struts for the 3A installation. If you're just joining us, we're two hours and 12 minutes into the EBA where the crew has gone to the 3A work site and has built an upper bracket build as well as completed the center pass to mass canister install. And we have now completed the left struts and now on to the right for the three A power channel. On your screen you see EV1, Kayla Barron at the top of your screen and you see Raja Chari in the articulated foot restraint. 
his suit is designated with no stripes, while Kayla Barron, EV1, has the red stripes. Can you tell if I'm in, Taylor, or am I in too deep? Uh, I, can't yeah. my, I can't get my heels up, so I think I'm in. Stand by a minute, Greg. Yeah, yeah, no problem. No rush. And I'd Caleb. like the PGT and torque wrench to the left lower strut, handrail assist to the sob. And go ahead, Ike. Perfect. I was actually going to just remind you where, where you wanted to put them, and then you can lock the PGT ret uh, and or use the strut wire tie to stow the tools as needed. And then we'll take a glove, hap, and gauntlet check from you. Yes, Emma. Got the ret locked and I've got the torque wrench kind of under the wire ties. My gauntlets are down. Up is dry. And checking out my gloves now. Dry have good gauntlets. Copy. Baseline, I'm trying to remember if I saw this before, but there's a little bit of RTV wear below my right index finger. Hey, copy, was that? Spot that's come up. Did you say below your index finger or on the right index finger? Uh, just below it in the transition between like the pad RTV and the turtle skin RTV below it. Okay, right index finger, and we've got a good video of that as well. Thank you. We copy. Right index finger, RTV wear. And uh, Roger, just because of your orientation, I can't tell for sure if your heels are in. Yeah, I, I can't pull them up, so I, <laughs> I've either wet in so good or I'm in, but either, way, pretty I, secure to either me. way I can't move. What I can tell, you look like you're in. Okay, Kayla, you're going to retrieve the right mid strut. That's uh, back straps 9 and 10 to transfer to Roger. And he's obviously a little farther away, so you're going to have to work together to get that handoff. Yep, more of a blind handoff. Let me get those. Yep, and you're going to stow. You're going to stow that mid strut on your BRT, doing a ret swap to the stanchion closest to the side pad. Roger, do you feel like you can lean a little to your left? I can, yep. Okay. I may have to see how far we get here. I can get to about, that's kind of oscillatory, like I come that way and then I throw momentum. When you say come back the other direction, without grabbing onto the uh, mounting bracket, I can't hold myself too far that direction. And up onto the triangle here. I can see it coming towards me. I wish I was taller. 
Actually, taller taller may not help in this situation. Got it. I've got fingers on it. Okay, I've got uh, contact. I've got control. Let me get a red on it, and then I'll send it back towards you to get the other red off. Nice job. And you want to rip to the stanchion closest to the side pad. There's three. And Raz, it looks to me like you can probably reach the bag rat, and that might be easier if you feel okay. like you can get it with your left hand. Yep, I can do that. Coming back. Go for it. All right, nice job. Now, Kaylee, you're going to retrieve the right lower strut to pass off to Roger when he's got a free hand. You're you're going to pass him the uh, you want the clevis bolt toward EV2. Right. And that's back strap seven and eight, right in the middle of the bag. doing relative to timeline, Ike. If you want EV2, you're about 15 minutes ahead. Slow and steady. Very nice. Here. Back. Ready for the lower. And Roger, you're going to ret to the handrail stanchion closest to the clevis end of the right lower strut. Could you tip it towards the mast cap or towards the center? And then oops, a little towards me. I've got a hand on it, don't have control yet. Now I've got control. And you said the handrail closest to the uh, clevis? Stay firm, handrail stanchion nearest the clevis end. And I am I good to start translating around? Uh, once he does the red swap, you're going to have to release uh, okay. yeah, the bag point. red. I've got my red on it. Turn back to you. Yep. We know and, how then, far. and then, Kayla, you my can translate to the, to the mass canister right, st right side sob launch bracket. Uh, we recommend going outboard of the mass canister to the radiator side, and uh, please fair lead so that your tether stays off of the BGA. You can uh, use S5 handrail 2102. Right, bag from there. Okay, I've got it. And Roger, just a reminder, there's a PGT and a torque wrench on the bottom of this one, so you've got some tools down there as well that you're moving. Perfect. I can see the uh, spherical bolt from here. It looks flat. Right side. Thank, thank you for that. Right side uh, spherical bearing uh, looks uh, flush. And then, Kayla, you're headed over to the right side uh, saw bolt. In uh, same warning, watch out for the pinch point there. Can you say again the handrail you want me to fairly on? Uh, recommendation is S5 handrail 2102. But the okay. important thing is just if you keep your safety tether cable off of the BGA, there's uh, quite a few options to do that. That fairly under the recommended handrail. I'm not sure if it'll stay as I translating, but I'll keep an eye on it. And if it comes out, I will be uh, fairly it. Okay, we copy. I get stayed in place. Good words, thanks. And Roger, if you can uh, verify that the grounding pit pin is removed from the strut stow location. It is 
Affirmative. Copy. Currently two hours and 23 minutes into today's EVA, we see Kayla Barron translating over to the right side of the 3A mass canister to help Raja Chari install the 3A right struts. I'm just going to adjust my cooling real quick, Roger. Yeah, no course. Recapping some of the milestones today at 7.12 a.m. Central Time, 8.12 a.m. Eastern, NASA astronauts Kayla Barron and Raja Chari turned their suits on battery power, making their way out of the hatch to start today's spacewalk. They are currently on the starboard four truss at the 3A power channel. They have successfully installed the upper bracket and center pad to the mass canister, as well as the installation of the left struts. They are currently working, again, on the right struts for install. This is all for the modification kit. Sounds good. Yep, then you're going to work together to install the right lower strut M19 to the Saab launch bracket. This install will be for future IROS or ISS rollout solar array upgrades. And, we want to, yep, hold there. and we're going to start with four turns. I've got PGT settings if you want them. Copy, four turns by hand on M19. All right, so we're going to move over to Raja, and we're going to hand start the right lower strut L6 to mounting bracket L6. That's both M20, and we'd like two turns. I have PGT settings if you need them. Two turns. Hey, firm. If I can get it through the... Yes, yeah. and you've got some uh, Sharpie marks there to kind of show you where the... Uh, the uh, bracket should align, but it again is one of those multiple diameter bolts, so you got to get uh, that, that wider shaft through multiple pieces of uh, that bracket. And then two There's turns. Two turns by hand. Copy. Two yep. on M20. And Kayla, now we're going to uh, drive M19. I've got PGT settings. Ready? Hey, you're going to do Bravo 7 clock 2. On the short PGT. Bravo 7 clockwise 2 is set. Okay, we're going to torque M19, expecting a minimum of 10 more additional turns. Uh, I'd adjust my body position here once I see where the PGT is. Starting turns. Good rebate. Bravo 7, clock 2. And I'm experiencing some a little bit of running torque, but it might be the angle I'm holding the PGT at. I'm gonna double check that I'm right on here. Okay, copy uh, some running torque. It was just close to the end there. And I believe I counted eight turns there. I green light 25 decimal four on the torque. And actually the PPT is telling me it was seven turns. Okay, copy seven on the PGT green light, 25.4. Okay, and now you are going to 
swap the two inch socket from the short PGT to the torque wrench and we're going to final torque with the torque wrench again. All right, and I'm showing 11 turns total, so we may expect more turns on the torque wrench. But we're looking for, again, breaking it over twice. Okay, copy, and maybe uh, three, three and a half turns on the torque wrench. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, with the torque wrench clockwise 60 foot pounds, uh, we're going to final torque, uh, give us the turns, and looking for that wrench to break over twice. Um, just so the PGT is not flying around, I'm going to have an independent right now for the torque wrench, and I'm going to remove the adjustable between them. Okay, copy. You've reattached the PGT, and you're going to disconnect the torque wrench and the PGT reds. I'm working on this upper grounding dip pin while she's doing that. This is at an odd angle, so I'm still struggling to try to get into the grounding block. But no, it's only getting harder once we drop the bolt. Copy. Yeah, it looks like that uh, cable's got a little memory making it hard to line up. Yeah. And you can go in from the other side, that other hole. Uh, as long as they both are in the grounding block, that's a good config. Yeah, this one that's facing towards me, I'm saving for the mid strip because I think that's even harder to get around the corner with. Okay, copy. Looks like that one. You got a yeah, good start on it. I was going the wrong way on the torque wrench. Not doing myself any favors there. Can't double check that it was going clockwise. Okay, and about how many turns, Kayla? I did um, 32 throws of the torque crunch, and it was about an eighth of a turn per throw. Okay, so we copy about four turns counterclockwise, and now we've reset it to clockwise. So we're looking at maybe seven or more turns.
Hey, Kayla, Ike, uh, back with you. Sorry about that, not giving you a heads up about the handover. Um, so, work in the torque wrench. That was 120 throws, <laughs> and uh, I think it was still about an eighth of a turn per throw. Okay, so... What counted? Yeah, somebody down here is going to do that math, but copy 120 throws, about an eighth of a turn each one. Uh, we're going to talk that over. And uh, you got two breakovers on the torque wrench? Okay, sir. Okay, uh, take a breather, and when you're ready, we'll take those lower strut checks, the black line, the gap, and a wiggle test. Black line looks parallel and flush, no gap at the bearing. Wiggle test. I just heard wiggle test. Kayla, confirm a good wiggle test. Good wiggle test. Copy, good wiggle test. That's a good M19. Nice work there. Take take a breather. Um, and you can leave the short PGT and the torque wrench on the right lower strut handrail. Uh, and when you're ready, verify that MLI covering the lower strut pad. Roger, I've got PGT settings for you when you're ready. Got uh, level one clockwise, two if that's still good. That is a good readback. You can drive M20 to torque, looking for a minimum of five more turns. Okay, M20 to torque, looking for five turns. Can I go to head up towards the side pad? Uh, we'll take a glove hap and gauntlet check, and then you do have a go to translate to the mass canister right side pad install location. Got a low torque light, 7.8 with uh, four turns. You want to hit it again? I think it's a better be position here. Four additional for six total, and a low torque light. Hit it again, please. Bravo a one, clockwise two. And Kayla, for you, we, we recommend. Glove, Sam is last report. Okay, dry hat, good gloves. Gauntlets down. And good gauntlets. And we recommend you go outboard yeah, one handrail to 2123 and then transfer to the mass canister handrail. Go ahead, Roger. Got a quarter turn, uh, good to green light, 11.8. Back line is maybe a half millimeter from being flush. And for total turns, it was probably closer to two and a half when I did the initial hand start in retrospect versus two, um, if that helps with you, anything. Copy. Initial hand start was closer to two and a half. You got four additional, and then you got one more quarter turn. So I'm showing, uh, uh, again, somebody's going to do that funny math. It's six and a half plus turns with a good green light, and the black line is a half a millimeter. Good M20. Good M20. You can stow your PGT and release that le right lower strut ret.
The pit pin is in. We know you got the pit. On the upper stretch here, the low, the uh, red is released. Perfect. Good red. Uh, did you say the MLI is in work and the pit pin we heard you install? We'll take a we'll take a glove, hap, and gauntlet check when you're done, and then we'll start on the right mid strut. Yeah, dry hat gauntlets are down, and no change on the gloves. Copy, good glove hat gauntlets. Okay, when the two of you are ready, uh, Roger, you can grab the right mid strut from your BRT. Release the pit pin from the locking position, and when Kayla's ready, you can extend that side pad toward her. I'm ready. All right, Kayla, and same as the other side, you're going to engage the uh, the clevis on the inboard side uh, as toward the top of your head. You're going to have to go a little side to side, which is stationed up and down, to get those teeth engaged, and then you'll pivot it toward your feet, stationed outboard, to engage the soft dock. Very nice. It is soft dock. And uh, when you're ready, you can either hand start or use the PGT, the long PGT, to put two turns on M9 through 12. I'll use the PGT, and I'm ready for setting. Alpha 2, clock 2. Alpha 2, clockwise 2. And two turns on M9 through 12. On M10. I'm going to adjust my body position a little bit here. Okay, copy that. And uh, did you get two turns on one of the bolts? Ten. Two on ten. Turns on nine. Two turns on nine. Turns on twelve. Two on twelve. Two turns on eleven. Copy two on eleven. That's two on uh, M nine through twelve. Roger, over to you. We're going to install the mid strut L seven to upper strut L seven. Maneuver in the APFR as required. And I've got PGT settings for you when you're ready. I'm looking at M24 volt. Is that going into L7? That is it, M24. And you're going to drive M24 to torque with Bravo 1 can, clock 2. I can hand start it if that works. Uh, over to you. I'm going to hand start it just to keep it in there as I got it started. Sounds good. There's two turns hand started, and Bravo 1 clock was two. Copy. Oh, two turns hand started, Bravo 1 clock two. Good read back. You can drive M24 to torque.
Now two hours and 45 minutes into today's spacewalk, Rajachari is currently installing a mid strut to the upper right strut previously installed to the 3A mass canister. Torque, so I can hit it again. Red light. Look splash. Black line. Copy. You can hit it again. 4.5 for a total of 6.5 with a low torque. Go to hit it again. Good green light, maybe a quarter turn, 12.0. Like point four okay. turns, what PG says. Good green light, and I heard you earlier say the black line is flush. All right, it's a good M24. Oh, you can God, stow God, your PGT. Light. Say again, Caleb. On the PGT. Said you broke up on your last call, so we might have missed something you said. Okay, Roger, that's a good so M24. And I'm looking for a go to drive M9 you can, through 12. You can drive M9 through 12 the to torque. M9, four turn. Torque 3.7 with a green light. Green light four turns on M9. And Roger, if you haven't already, you can install the pit pin to the grounding block. Pit pin's installed. Five turns on M10, green light, three decimal six on the torque. M10, five turns, green light. And the MLI is installed as well, so that I can reach. MLI over the muzzle back to Green light, 3.7, four turns on M12. Four turns, green light, M12. And stand by on the MLI there. Getting a good spot for M11. About four and a half turns on M11. B decimal seven on the torque, green light. Copy, M11, 4.5 turns, green light. We're three and a half minutes to sunset. Okay, Kayla, uh, once you put your PGT away, you can release EB2's RET from the right mid strut and then verify that MLI is covering the side pad clevis. is covering the side pad clevis, the pit pins in place, and in work on Roger's rip. Copy. And so the right mid strut adjustment collar. Uh, all the uh, struts have been good so far. And so, Kayla, if you're BRT to the mid strut handrail, minimize normal and torsional loads into the mid strut. Counter torque wrench loads, please. And so you can translate to the right mid strut collar bolts. Roger. 
and then verify the middle locking tip pin can reach the receptacle, but do not install it yet. PGT settings, and we're going to drive collar bolts M25 and 26. We're looking for Bravo 7, clock 2, with the long PGT. Kayla Barron. Bravo 7, clockwise 2, what we're looking for? A-firm. That's a good read back. And you're going to drive bolts M25 and M26 to torque. NASA astronaut Kayla Barron currently being seen on screen with a PT designated with designated EV1 with the red stripe. She has her pistol grip tool where she's driving two bolts on the mid strut collar. Just a reminder, we do have that shorter socket if uh, that would help for reach as an option. turns green light in which bolt? That was M25. On M25, five turns green light. Right now on M26. Concerned about the tab, but we got four turns and a green light on M26. Stand by, we're talking it over. Okay. It looks symmetric with the other side. Turns okay, that might have been uh, parallax for me. Raj is saying the gap looks parallel. Copy, thanks for those words. The gap is parallel. Okay, we're going to continue. And so, uh, Kayla, we're going to have you ratchet with the PGT, and we're going to set it to ratchet clockwise. Check the MTL to 30.5. I'm in ratchet clockwise and MTL is in 30.5. Okay, we're going to uh, manually ratchet M25 and 26 to torque. We're looking for two pops on each one. Figure out my best body position here. Will this Copy. challenge you? It is, and uh, you, you know, holding the very top over the display with one hand and the bottom underneath the battery is one great position, and you can also counter the torque doing that if you're able to reach it that way. Okay. We are a minute 45 from a handover. Our 
Did you get any leverage on this? Oh, there's one socket. Copy, we heard one pop, and we, we just a reminder, we have that shorter socket if you think that'll help. Pops. Two good pops. The right struts have been installed. The crew has begun torquing down the adjustment collar bolts, and the crew is currently 25 minutes ahead of the timeline. It's quiet on the phone. Came off the And Roger, Ike, did you call? No, just talking to Kayla. One pop. Copy, one pop, and we're 10 seconds to a handover. Two pops. Two pops. Copy, two pops, 25 to 20 seconds. All right, Kayla, Ike, back with you. And did you get any additional turns on 25 and 26? Um, hard to say, really, Ike. I was throwing the PGT, uh, the butt of the PGT, maybe an eighth of a turn, probably four or five times. Okay, so maybe a half a turn, somewhere in between a quarter and a half a turn. And is that on each? Yeah. Okay, we copy. Thank you. Uh, you can reset your PGT to motor. Verify MTL is still 30 decimal five. Uh, I can still get so I'll reset it to motor next time I get it out. I go to install the pistons. Okay, you yeah, and uh, your last call was a uh, quite choppy. Yes, you can release the folded MLI and install the middle pit pin in the final location, routed under the same side of the MLI as the lanyard anchor. And Roger, now that the right collar bolts are driven to torque, you can close the mid strut mounting bracket MLI. Alright, we may have a problem with this pit pin. Yeah. Say. I'll push it back. And it should actuate so pushing or pulling. Go ahead. What's happened, Ike, is I think the, um, the washer and grounding washer has, like, pushed too far. Like, it's overextended. So the, um, I think that it should be above the ball bearing, like, all of those pieces. It's below the ball bearing right now. Is that how it should be? Oh, they're starting to move. Oops. Oh, and it just came yeah, apart. Yeah, we, we agree with your assessment that it should be above. Uh, stand by. The two pin just came apart, Ike. Yeah. Got some of it, but not all of it. The washer and the rounding. That piece is still there, but the end piece is like the ball bearing. It looks like they came off. Washer is free. I don't know yep. that. Oh, sorry. Could we copy? Thanks for that description. So 
I, let me tell you what I've got here. I lost the washer in the middle. I got the lanyard. Um, oh, I thought, actually, that washer might have been the, the retaining washer at the end. The pieces I've got remaining, I've got the spring, kind of a thick metal washer, and then the lanyard back on above the pit pin. I think the washer, we lost the washer that was on the end. Um, and that that had like popped over the detent and was jammed. And when I was trying to push it back on, it came apart. I think electrically you'll, electrically you'll still be good when you install that. Box and, stays in. I can get it there. and the Kayla confirmed that the when you install the pit pin, the lanyard will still be connected, right? So I think we're missing a piece, but it should still function. Would you agree? Yeah, so I installed it just because that was the best way. <coughs> Sorry, something in my throat. Uh, the best way to keep it from getting lost. And Copy, it's installed. Um, what I see is I have the receptacle, then the lanyard, then the uh, washer, the thick washer, and the spring. Copy, receptacle, lanyard. And do you think that it will stay in? I do, yeah. I think, um, yeah, that, uh, I'm sorry, can I have, do you have my HECA view of it? Yeah, I'm wondering if you guys can see it on my HECA. Yeah, I do think it'll stay in. I just need to be careful not to pull on the ring and pull it out. Yep, hey, Brent, don't again. pull on the ring. We can see it in your HECA. It does look like it's installed, and we've got a couple questions just to see if it's going to serve its function. So we're talking it over. Give a second. Keeping the parts that were on there. <laughs> I, I tried to cast that washer, but I think I had no chance. All right, EB1, EB2, we're going to continue. Uh, the pin is installed. We'll leave it installed. That's a good fig. And so you've uh, released the folded MLI, installed the pin. You can now close the MLI around the collar bolt. Now three hours and three minutes into today's spacewalk, recapping some of the milestones for today. NASA astronauts Kayla Barron and Raja Chari switched to battery power at 7.12 a.m. Central Time, 8.12 a.m. Eastern Time. They got over into their work site on the Starboard 4 truss at the 3A power channel. So far, they have successfully installed the upper brackets and center pad to the mass canister, as well as installed the left and right struts. They are currently inserting clamps, as well as co covering brackets with the multi-layer insulation. Give you one of mine. I think I have enough that I can do this side, Roger. I know you're right, you yeah, have to give me one. Yeah, because otherwise you'll be short on the other side when I'm doing the bag. Are you with us, Ike? Yeah, I'm with you. 
And uh, I hear you guys talking about the uh, wire ties, so you're going to install them on the uh, telescoping end, one near the mid-strut collar and one near the clevis end. You just confirm it's a short wire tie? A short wire tie on both A-firm. And I'm going to give her one off my BRT. I, I still have the reach, kind of like we saw in the EBAT run, to be able to get to it. So I'll pass off one of my shorts to the Kayla. Copy that. EV2 passing off a short wire tie to EV1. Caleb working on the second wire tie, uh, and Raja, you can egress the APFR and retrieve the short PGT and the torque wrench from the right lower strut. The ratchet. Okay. Yeah, place on the second wire tie. Copy, second wire tie installed. All right, so now we're going to work on the left mid strut adjustment collar. And so you can translate to the left mid strut adjustment collar bolts. Picking up the fairly off my safety tether first, I don't think I want that All right, Kayla, and very similar to the other side, we're going to, uh, once you're in position, verify that middle locking pit pin can reach the receptacle, but do not install.
Genite is pretty tight. Hard to verify without attempting to install it. Okay, so one thing to... Yeah, to... I am feeling cautious about tugging on it too much because of what happened with the last one. Yep, good idea. And uh, just make sure you're routing it along the side that it is anchored on at the handrail. So just check the base of that cable and make sure you're routing it from that side. I am, and uh, one challenging thing about the fit check is the MLI is still in the way. And you can so release like the MLI. Accordion to MLI. You can release the MLI. Okay, based on what we've seen in your video, uh, it looks close enough to us, so you can, uh, you have a go to continue. I agree. Okay. All right, so uh, I've got PGT settings for you, and we're going to drive collar bolts M30 and M29. And Roger, you're going to take that PGT and torque wrench uh, to the strut bag and verify that EV1's fair lead is still in place, that it's not in the way uh, when you go to uh, repack the strut bag. I think I got my PGT in hand. Okay, your settings are Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Okay, I'm back in motor, and Bravo 7, clockwise 2 is split. All right, with a long PGT, you can drive bolts M29 and M30 to torque. And Raja, once you get there, you can repack the strut bag, and if required, stow that GoPro. Ike, uh, that was three turns, but I got a red light and low torque. And Roger, the GoPro is still tethered to the bag. Okay. You just tuck it in. Copy three turns with a low torque. You have a go to hit it again. Works. You might, uh, but I still. It said low torque, but I do have a green light, no red light. Uh, torque two, two one decimal six. And just a little low like. Copy and how many more turns? Have one additional turn. Copy one additional for four total turns and which bolt? That was M twenty nine. Copy on M twenty nine, we got a green light. Uh you said you also saw low low torque? Yeah, it. There was a low torque message, but then it cleared and the green light came on. And the actual torque is 21 decimal six. Programmed is 5 decimal five. Okay, copy. You can move on to M30. Okay, move on. Let me start back. I can see her tether on the other side of the board part of the IEA, so I think we're good. Can't okay. Car, so. As long as you think you can stay clear, Roger, you can uh, stow the short PGT and torque wrench in the strut bag, and then we will take an inventory of the strut bag. And I thought was six turns on M30, green light, torque is 25 decimal four. M30 green light, six turns on M30. No issues. Okay, Kayla, we're going to ratchet again, ratchet clockwise, and verify MTL 30.5. Reminder, we have the two-inch rigid socket if desired, and we're looking for two pops on M29 and M30. Work. Copy. And any additional turns as well, please.
right, I, I'm just going to call out, uh, go from inboard to outboard of the strut bag and tell you what I've got, okay? That works. And we are ready for the inventory. M29. And two pops right, on 29. Go ahead. That's M29. That was about one additional turn. And on to M30. Are you grinder? Okay. All right. Uh, Copy. On one internal bag, Rhett, I've got a small, two small small reps. One small small rep going to a PGT. That PGT also has an AET on it. The other small small is going to the torque wrench. And that is connected to the same AET as the uh, PGT. That's that strap. Strap number, sorry, internal feather point hotel has a small, small ret with a hammer and then an adjustable with a GoPro. Strap 